So good. Thank you so much, Russell. And, um, you know, just sometimes there's technical difficulties and all of that, but you're here this morning, which is great. And, um, you know, sometimes these little things are sent to try us. Um, But nonetheless, we win. Do you believe that? You know, with God, all things are possible. Um, One of the things I love about the Apostle Paul is that even in his toughest times, in his most difficult moments, in his lowest ebb, whether things were going well or whether things were not going well, he could say this. He says, I know that my God is able to work all things for my good. So we don't have a bit of water this morning, so the service is a little bit sort of, you know, not as flowy as normal. Uh, But in the grand scheme of things, it's just a little blip at the end of the day. And uh, so I'm going to just take some time right now. Uh, I'm just going to pray because um, I want to say this to you. This conference that we're about to have, um, I really want to encourage you. If you've not signed up for the conference yet, please sign up. And don't just sign up for a little bit. Sign up for the whole thing. There is a principle in the Bible called the let us principle. Uh, It said when they built the Tower of Babel, it says, let us build a tower. Um, Their motivation wasn't particularly the right one, but there was power in the declaration of the let us. When Nehemiah saw a vision to rebuild the walls that had been broken down at Jerusalem, he said to the people, he said, let us, yeah, rebuild. It's quite interesting that if we can get a mentality that says, we are all together in this, yeah? Then God is truly able to do amazing things. And I was away this weekend and I saw Pastor Scott and Pastor PJ and they are so excited about being here. And I don't want them to come in to kind of like a half, half their environment. You, you follow what I'm saying? I want them to come in where they're coming into a let us, yeah, change something over this weekend. Let us take hold of something. Let us build something into this church. I know they're all coming super excited. I was talking to Pastor PJ, who's going to be doing Saturday night. He's going to be doing a prophetic and inspirational night. And he said to me, he said, Steve, he said, I really felt I wanted to bring this message, but the Lord spoke to me. I was in Naples this week. He said, the Lord spoke to me. He said, no, what I'm going to give you is going to be fresh manna for Life City. And I don't want you to miss out on that. I want you to be here for everything that we're going on. So... If you have not signed up yet, please sign up. We've got the children's work going on Saturday morning, Sunday as normal. But get some babysitters for Friday, Saturday. Make sure that you are here. It's going to be an awesome time. Hey, I started a message uh, just a couple of weeks ago. How many of you enjoyed Esther last week? Come on, you can do better than that. How many of you enjoyed Esther last week? She was awesome. Uh, with that keep going message. And I really want to encourage you, go back and listen to some of these messages. They'll bless you. But the week before that, I started a message called The Advantage, all about the Holy Spirit. Uh, And I want to come back to that today. And we looked right at the beginning of how the Holy Spirit fell upon those who were gathered, yeah, waiting in a room in Jerusalem because Jesus had said, wait, yeah, for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And in that moment, Yeah, their lives were radically empowered. And from the moment they poured out the room, God began to do amazing things. And there is something about the Holy Spirit, yes, within us and also upon us that allows God to work in this world of ours in a supernatural way to bring the kingdom of God, yeah, here on earth. Anybody with me this morning? And this empowerment that we have You know, it sounds so cool, doesn't it? I'm empowered. It is cool because it's God not only, yes, operating within you, but it's God operating from you, flowing from you. And and if you look at the life of Jesus, what He did was incredible things. And that's because the Holy Spirit was present with Him. Holy Spirit came like a dove and descended upon Him in the time He was baptised and anointed Him and From that moment, Jesus did incredible miracles. And I don't know about you, but I want to see incredible miracles. Do you want to see incredible miracles? Do you want to see God doing things that you never thought were possible? And I want to tell you, I have seen stuff with my own eyes. Stuff that you cannot explain away. 
I remember being at a conference years ago when I was just young, so much younger than today. <laughs> and I remember being there and they were praying for people. And I heard this screaming of a young child. And I thought, what's, what's that? So I kind of pushed through the crowds a little bit to find out what's going on. And I said to somebody, what's going on? And they said, a young child who'd been deaf from birth has just received their hearing. Just imagine if you'd never heard anything and all of a sudden you could hear, maybe you would scream a little. And I thought, I can't, I kind of, I'd never seen anything like that. And I was kind of like, wow, what's that? And I, I remember when somebody's leg grew and you go, oh, please give over, Steve. I remember watching somebody's leg grow in front of me. The guy was praying and he'd come in on crutches and he walked out whole. What's, what's that about? That's God. I've told you the story before when I was in the Ukraine when I prayed for a woman whose eye was swollen and weeping person in a moment of, I would say, very small faith. I prayed for her, laying my hand over her eyes. And when I took it off, her eye had been completely restored. You can't make that stuff up. There was nobody more amazed at me in over my life. I kind of want to be amazed at what God can do. I don't know about you. I want to be amazed. Maybe should I, I should have called this message, Be Amazed. But I'm going today to John 16 and verse seven. And I, I talked about this verse last time and I'm gonna read it to you, but I'm gonna read it to you from the Amplified. And this is Jesus speaking, he says, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counsellor, the strengthener, the standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship with you. And that's something that I believe that the Holy Spirit wants for every Christ follower is to be in a close relationship. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna get into this. Come on, why don't we just lift our hands a moment. Father, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, come and touch hearts and come and inspire us in a fresh way as we hear your word this morning. Holy Spirit, come and touch hearts and lives today. Lord, we long for the miraculous, Lord. We long to see amazing things. We long for the kingdom to be manifest here on earth. And so today, as we come to your word, speak into our hearts. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Michael, you may go. So good. Let's give it up for Michael. Our functional capacity as a church comes from the Holy Spirit, yeah, working with us. Now, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's not that we have the Holy Spirit. The question is, does He have us? That's an interesting question. Yes, does the Holy Spirit have you? Does He have your agreement? Does He have your yes? Does he have your willingness? Does he have, yes, you ready to, to respond to his leading and to his voice? Which is an interesting question. Sometimes we, we often think, well, I've got the Holy Spirit. No, has he got us? Because if he's got us, if he's got us in that relationship, if he's got us in that agreement, if he's got us in that thing, that thing that says, hey, I am here and ready to go, then what things yeah, could be possible? What could we, we see? And the early church was filled with the Spirit and, and, and as the Spirit came upon them, they grew in courage and boldness and willingness to step out into miraculous expressions. You see, it's an interesting thing because when Jesus was here, he did things, that, but he said, he said this to the disciples, he says, greater things you will do. Now, if you've raised the dead, walked on water, if you've fed thousands of people with very little food, if you can pluck money from fish, yeah, if you can calm the wind and the waves, I wonder what's greater. But yet he said this, he said, you will do greater things. And yet what we see in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of those who had received the Holy Spirit upon their life, we see amazing things over 40 miracles that happen. And, and yet this idea of has the Holy Spirit got you? How willing are you to have courage when you feel you don't have any. 
How bold can you be when you feel you're so timid and maybe too weak to, yeah, to maybe to open your mouth or to step into a situation? How willing are you to trust the Holy Spirit? Because faith, yeah, when you look in the Hebrew Bible, is all about trust. How much do you trust God? We sing that song, I trust in God. How much do you trust in God? When He asks you to step into a situation or into a circumstance or into a moment, how willing are you? That's, that's something you've got to challenge your life with. Yeah. How, how willing are you? Because I think we miss moments and we miss opportunities and we miss because we're not tuned in to what the Holy Spirit is trying to say because maybe He doesn't have enough of us yet. Oh, there's one already, isn't it, this morning. Maybe He doesn't have enough of us yet. And yet there is something that He wants to do in and through you and me when it comes to His enabling. Now the word that we use so often in the Bible is the word spiritual gift. Some of you may have heard that phrase, spiritual gift. And the Apostle Paul writes to one of the early churches, church at Corinth, uh, about stuff that's going on because the Holy Spirit is being poured out there and stuff is happening. The problem is that people don't know how to interpret or to understand what's going on. And so the Apostle Paul writes this letter to them and we're gonna break into it in chapter 12. I'm reading from the message because it's not quite as direct as the New King James. It's a little softer and nicer. This is the Apostle Paul says, what I want to talk to you about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is a complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Now that sounds really cool, doesn't it? Do you know what the New King James says? The New King James says, I don't want you to be ignorant. <laughs> That's what Paul literally wrote. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant people. And I don't want to be an ignorant Christian, do you? We've got enough people out there in the world to think that Christians are ignorant that they don't know and they don't understand. And yet Paul is saying here, he says, I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Just nudge everybody and say, informed and knowledgeable. Oh, come on, you can do it a bit better than that. Informed and knowledgeable. He goes on, he says, remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it. Ever been there? You just did it so somebody else did it. You know, a bit of a lemming, just going along with the crowd. It's easy going with the crowd, isn't it? Yeah. I, I gotta say, one of the things I was blessed with when I was younger was this ability to not be fussed about the crowd. I just kind of, I, I came to faith at a young age and the moment I came to faith, I realised that God and me were a majority. Yeah. That I didn't need to find my affirmation or my inclusion Elsewhere, that didn't mean I didn't want to be friendly. I didn't want to be, yeah, go with people. I just realised I didn't need to go the world's way. I could go God's way. And so I just kind of carved my own path. And my life's pretty much been like that. Yeah, I just seem to, just seem to, but for many people, that's not. Most people kind of want to just fit in. Do you want to fit in? No, we don't want to fit in. We want to stand out. We want to take this life that's within us and stand out a little bit. From one phony go to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everybody else did it. It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence. Notice that word. Use your brain. Use your thinking and your experience to seek and to understand as well as we can. By 2050, the Barna Report has said that there will be more Christians on the planet than any other religion they are estimating around about 2.9 billion Christians by 2050. Woo! They're saying that Islam will be a little bit behind, but Christianity yeah, will be the predominant prevailing religion by 2050. We're pretty good at the moment. But here's the thing, church isn't meant to be a movement. It's meant to be a mission. Church isn't meant just to be a movement of people. It's meant to be a mission. That there is a mission that we carry and that we have. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, make disciples. There's no greater call upon the church than that. Go out, 
yeah, into your local communities. Go out into your workplaces where you get the opportunity, preach the gospel. Where people are in need, pray for them. And if people come to that place where they'll make a decision to become a Christ follower, stick with them, stand alongside them, teach them what you know. Help them be everything that they can be yeah, in God. That's the purpose of the church, amen. We're, we've got a mission. We're not just a movement of people. Yeah, we've got a mission. We've got a purpose. We've got a reason. And the interesting thing is, is that this mission is the central work of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you see me slightly just dipping on my left, it's because my hip's very sore, sorry. If you're wondering, I just thought I'd tell you that before I go any further. And so the Holy Spirit is here and He wants to do a work through His people. And so Paul is trying to educate the church and say, right, you've got to get an understanding of how the Holy Spirit works and what He wants to do. And so we come, yes, to 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, where it says, a spiritual gift, an enabling, an empowering, whichever way you want to look at this, is given to each of us so that we can help one another, so we can build the church, so we can continue to fulfill this mission. Come on, you're not sounding very excited about this today. Uh, Before I go any further, I want to say this. The greatest thing that you can do in your life as a Christian is lead somebody else to Jesus. If you never did another thing in your life other than lead somebody to Christ, you know that would be enough. And do you know why? Because they say that 95% of Christians who go to westernized churches, that includes us, have never led another person to Christ. Well, there's an indictment upon the church of God and the mission of God Yeah, that sometimes we're too interested in having a nice time on a Sunday and we forget about the mission that God has called us to. And yet the Holy Spirit is constantly saying, come on, come on, you've been equipped, you've been empowered, come on, you've got lots to do, just listen to what I'm telling you. Just listen to my voice and let me tell you, there's stuff for you to do. God equips for purpose, the purpose brings growth. Yeah, it builds relationships, it frees people from sickness, it establishes structures and orders, it releases revelation, it breaks spiritual oppression, it speaks encouragement and stirs mercy and compassion. I don't know about you, I kind of want all of those things happening in Life City. I want people to come in and find a purpose. I want them to grow in their lives. I want them to find friendship. I want them to be free of sickness. I want them to realise that God's got a, you know, a structure and an order yeah, that we can find that everybody's gift flows and works together. Hey, I want more revelation. I want to break spiritual oppression. I want to speak encouragement. Are you getting excited this morning? I want to stir mercy and I want to bring compassion. And it all starts with this relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit saying, I have got stuff for you. And to help you do that, I'm going to empower you. Yeah, there's gifts that you can work in. Now, for all the very quick people, they're going, well, what are the gifts? Great question. And even more, if there are gifts, which one might be mine? Another great question. So we're going to take a bit of time and look at this. Is it all okay? So how do I know? That's what I wrote here. How do I know? Because I asked that question when I first heard about spiritual gifts. I thought, well, how do I know? How do I know yeah, if I've got one? Well, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit works all things in all people. So the question you've got to ask yourself is, where's my start point? Well, your start point is twofold. Number one, your start point is read the Word of God and learn what the gifts are about and how they operate and what the Holy Spirit wants to do with them. And that's where we're going to start. And then the second thing is to start being willing and stepping out in things, doing things. One of the quickest ways to discover what I was gifted in when I was younger was to discover what I wasn't gifted in. So I would just start doing stuff and realised that actually I wasn't too cool over there, I was better over here. Uh, I wasn't too strong there, but I was stronger here. And as I kind of just went and did things and educated myself in the way that the Holy Spirit worked, I began to tune in more and more to what the Holy Spirit was speaking into my life and how to operate. I told you about the first time I had a word for somebody, do you remember that? 
Uh, nobody ever told me about words from the Holy Spirit. I just remember being willing to go and then I started to look it up and learn. I talked to you about speaking in tongues. Do you remember that? I went and looked about what it means to speak in tongues. So I educated myself in what these things were as well as operating yeah, in whatever was flowing. And I think so often we find ourselves doing one or the other and not always both. So let me read to you from 1 Corinthians 12 again. And this is what Paul says. He says, to one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To the same, to another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these things. He alone decides which gift each person should have. You see, it's not a superstar mentality. It's a body mentality. It's not a superstar. No one has them all. Because the Holy Spirit gives yeah, to each as he wills. It's interesting because when you look at the New King James, when it says, I would not have you be ignorant about spiritual gifts, that's how it starts. If you want to be a little bit nerdy, you can go to the Greek. And what it says there literally says, I would not have you be ignorant of how the Spirit of God controls each one of us. Now, we don't like the idea of control, the idea of oh, I'm being controlled. What it literally means is, is the Holy Spirit will come and say, this is what I want you to do. And this is what I'm going to give you. And that comes back to what? How open we are in relationship and how willing we are to respond. And so in this list, there's all these things that are happening. It's quite amazing. But verse 12 says this, the human body has many parts, but many parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. That means that God is interested in everybody getting involved. So you're not sitting there today as the odd one out. You're not sitting there today as the one who doesn't have. You're not sitting there as the one that the Holy Spirit won't choose. He chooses all of us. He works in all of us. He's got stuff for all of us. Come on, you need to get a little bit more excited this morning. He's got gifts for all of us. Now you might say, okay, well, we don't see a lot of that here on a Sunday morning. Well, that's because the Holy Spirit chooses to work in different environments and different opportunities. If you come to our prayer meeting once a month, God, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. People are being prayed for, hands are being laid on people. People are getting prophetic words, words of discernment. We get God speaking in from His Word. It's like, it is good stuff. If you've never been there, you need to come. It's one hour, one hour to come and see what God may do in a certain place. The Sunday here, there are times when just a couple of weeks ago, we will lay hands on people and speak into people's lives, giving that prophetic utterance that the Holy Spirit comes. We'll pray at times for people to be healed of sicknesses. But you know, it's quite interesting because I've prayed for people at times to be healed and I've seen that happen from time to time, but I wouldn't say it was my gift in. But I have seen people who've got a gift of healing on their life. I remember being at a conference years ago and I was still young, I was only about sort of 17, still trying to figure out this whole idea of the Holy Spirit and what was going on. And there was a guy at the front and he was sort of introduced as a healing evangelist. And I didn't really know what that meant, but I thought this looks super exciting. And as he was praying, he, he, he was pointing at people and he was saying words and he was saying, God's going to touch you now and heal you. And I'm thinking, ooh, this is going to be really interesting. And then at one point he pointed he pointed sat down towards the back. And I thought, is he pointing at me? But he wasn't. He was pointing at the guy in front of me. And he said, you, sir, you. And the guy sort of nodded. And he said, you've got, you've got some disorder with your blood. 
a doctor has told you that you have some disorder in your blood and it's affecting your whole health. And he said, that's, that's right, I did this week. And the guy said this, he said, well, I'm just going to pray for you now and the Holy Spirit's going to hear you. You might feel a little bit of heat, he said. That's how he said it. And he began to pray and then this heat began to emanate around this guy. I nearly passed out. I had to go outside, get some air. I came back in and as I came back in, this guy is up at the front, he's running around, running around like, whoa, look at this. I'm thinking, what has happened? I nearly passed out, you're running around at the front. And then I thought, this, this is what came into my head. Well, how do you know? How do you know anything's happened? So the guy said, I want you to go. I want you to see your doctor. And I want you to come back here in two weeks because that's when the next meeting was. And I want you to give testimony. Two weeks later, I couldn't wait to be there. I was in the car. I was like, we were going. I was going to be there to find out what was going on. And the guy came up and he gave testimony. He said he'd gone in that week for a checkup and his blood disorder had completely vanished completely gone if there's something that makes you hungry to want to see people healed that was certainly made me hungry to want to see people healed and every time God does something amazing and miraculous it makes me want to see more of it and I want to encourage you there is the time and the place the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing the Holy Spirit knows what he wants to do in any given moment and we need to be open and willing towards that it's interesting though, in 1 Corinthians 14, and it says this, he says, well, my brothers and sisters, let's summarize. When you meet together, one will sing. Well, we've had some great singing. One will teach. That's what I'm trying to do today. Another will tell some special revelation God has given. One will speak in a tongue. Another will interpret what is said, but everything is done and must strengthen all of you. I want to say, if you want to start practicing what God's got for you, start in the church. Amen. It might just start like this. You might just get an inkling. You might just get a feeling. You might just get a, a thought. You might get a picture. You might get a word. Because here's the thing that I've discovered about God, and I wish he didn't do it this way, but he does. Is he gives you a little bit. He gives you a start. The question is, God's attracted to your yes. He's attracted to your movement. He's attracted to your willingness. So he gives you a little bit. So I find that when I'm speaking, and some of you may have received a prophetic word from me at times, sometimes I've only got a word. Sometimes I've only got a bit of a picture. But I've learned over the years just to start. And so the moment I start, then God starts flowing in. The Holy Spirit starts taking over. Amen. <laughs> I had somebody say to me one day, they say, how do you know so much about me? I said, never met you before. They said, I know, how do you know so much about me? I said, I don't, but God does. I don't know anything about you, but God does. I said, just receive what he's saying to you. And there are those times when you've just got to go in the moment with the inkling, with the feeling, with just the little bit that God's given you. Maybe he might show you a picture of something. Pray into it. Maybe he may say in a moment, that you're walking or going somewhere or in your workplace. Maybe it might be as simple as just saying, why don't you just go over and encourage such and such? The question is, will you? Who knows what may come of it? Who knows what may be the start point to where the end point may be? I don't know about you, but I want to see more of the Holy Spirit. When we utilise whatever gift the Holy Spirit is working through us, then what comes is fruit. There's only one measurable in the Bible and that is the fruit that comes from your life and my life. The Bible says you will recognise them and you will know them by the fruit that is produced from their life. You will know a tree by the fruit that comes from it. I tell you, I don't want to get to heaven and feel I never produced anything. I want to get to heaven and, and, and think, hey, there was much fruit that came off my life and it's all to your glory, amen. And so I'm out of time. There's so much more I want to say this morning. But come on, I want to give you this as, as we close, all right? 1 Corinthians 14.1 says this. It says, pursue love with eagerness, make it your goal. Yet earnestly desire and cultivate spiritual gifts which will bring benefit to the church. 
I don't know about you. Come on, stand to your feet with me this morning. We're just about out of time today. I don't know about you, but what's the eagerness in your heart today? What's the desire that you have this morning? Do you, do you want more of God? Do you want more of the things of God? Do you want to take hold of whatever the Holy Spirit has got for you? Because if you do, this is a moment right now. I'm going to pray a release over you, amen. amen. Come on. And I want to see some hands raised. I want to see some openness. I want to see some readiness because the Holy Spirit is more than ready. Come on. Come on. We're ready this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray right now. Come in anointing. Come and break open your gifts over your church, over your people. Speak into hearts, speak into situations, speak into moments, speak into thoughts. Father, I pray I release spiritual gifts over this church. Gifts of healing, gifts of prophecy, gifts of administration, gifts of leadership, gifts that would help evangelize, gifts of teaching, gifts of preaching. Oh Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and enable your church today. And Holy Spirit, even now, as every heart is open and every hand is raised in readiness, come and anoint, I pray today. Let there be an anointing that comes over your church today. Let, let this be a new day. Let there be something of a new willingness and a new readiness, I pray, to step up and to step in to everything that God has for us. It's not a movement, it's a mission. And Father, I pray for that hunger today in every heart and every life. And who knows what God may do in the coming days and weeks. Be ready, be ready to respond, be ready to step out. Who knows in your workplaces what God may require of you. Be bold, be encouraged. God's gonna do amazing things, amen. amen. Come on, let's put our hands together this morning. So good.